Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at some content creator tutorials dealing with soldering. Many of you already know that soldering is near and dear to my heart. I do it virtually every day and I'm always answering questions on it. As a matter of fact, that's probably my number one topic aside from grounding. So I wanted to do a video covering this where I can give you some tips as well as really give you more pointers of what to watch out for. Because again, there are a lot of content creators doing videos on this subject who really shouldn't be. Let's jump right in. Well, it's apparent that this content creator refuses to clean the barrel of his iron. I've seen this in previous content creator videos. You guys, I'm sure, have. When you are soldering, cleanliness is everything. Um, the thing to keep in mind, when you have carbon buildup like we see here, it's going to degrade how that iron holds heat and transfers heat. Now, this is the thing to keep in mind if you are expecting your tools to work as they should function. I'm really shocked that anyone would post a video where their equipment looks like this because once again, looking at what a soldering iron should look like as far as the barrel and the tip, if your units look like this, and some guys do have older units where they store them in their garage or in a high humidity environment, the thing to keep in mind is you can certainly clean your iron. I've done a video on this, and it's not hard to do. Um, the big thing here is that you understand that, again, if you're expecting it to work as it was designed – and give you really great solder joints, you have to take care of your tools. It's one of the first things my father taught me. So again, you take care of them, they take care of you. This is scary. And of course, we always see the typical uh, no flux being used as he's applying solder and you just get that blob look like you can see being done right here. Some videos really have to be seen to be believed. Um, I've discussed things like this in previous videos. And again, some of the logic behind what we've seen done is terrifying. You guys should never have anything flammable near anything that you're going to solder with, namely an iron that easily can get up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking at this is terrifying i don't even know where to go with this i don't know exactly what the point of this is let's see where he goes with this So apparently he didn't have a soldering iron holder, and I guess his point was not to use a piece of wood, but to screw in a metal bracket into the piece of wood, which is still flammable, and then putting the iron itself on the metal bracket. I don't think I have to tell you guys this is crazy. Um, again, not sure where this person's going with this, and this is another one of those videos where you know that in the near future, these will be discarded. Looking at stuff like this is really, really, really bad for end users who are really trying to find out the right way to do things. And it's just unfortunate that we see stuff like this. And I can assure you that this video came from a YouTuber who actually had like 60,000 subs. It makes you have to wonder if this is the general content they're putting out dealing with something like this what do they put out on other topics that's what always really is interesting wow 
Right, so most of you already know that you don't want to use a straight alligator clip to hold your leads because if you do, it's going to destroy or at least mar up your leads casing. Once again, there's enough pressure there that the teeth on the alligator clip are naturally going to bite into that casing and once again degrade it. Um, seeing this done in this video doesn't surprise me, of course, of what we're seeing, but many of you guys, once again, that want to do this and do it right, what you would do is apply a piece of heat shrink over each of the jaws, and in that way, you don't have to worry about the jaw biting into your casing on your lead. Another thing you could do is add some silicone tubing. My guys in RC, they do that all the time and that works out really, really well. That's my preferred method. I actually use the silicone tubing, um, but the heat shrink method works great too. The main thing here is, is that we think about what we're doing. Too many of these videos, you can tell there's not much thought going into it. It's more like, hey, watch me do this and give me clicks so I get paid. Guys, don't do things half-assed, do it right. What the hell is he doing? Now, I'm not sure what he's actually trying to accomplish here naturally with that amount of carbon on the soldering iron's tip. Heat transfer is horrible. And we can see that here because the solder itself is not even bonding to his iron's tip. So basically him trying to paint on solder of some format is definitely not gonna work. Once again, guys, understanding the use of flux is critical. That being said, I'm going to put a practical demonstration of how to solder at the end of this video so you guys can check it out and we'll go over best practice. I want you guys to check out this portion of the video right here on using flux. And this is from Lewis Rothman, which once again, he's an amazing YouTuber. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, check it out. Um, guy does a lot of soldering, a lot of surface board or surface soldering. So again, lots to learn here, but you can see how when he uses flux in his demonstration and you'll tie it together with mine at the end of the video and it all makes sense. Something. Okay. Do you see how instead of it being a nice joint, like on the top, it's sticking out. So check it out. This was a joint that was made by somebody using flux. This was a joint that was made when the flux is burnt out. See, it doesn't That's flow anymore. Example. It's just like taking a booger out of my nose and shoving it onto the, onto the capacitor. So the top side is a joint that was made properly with flux. This joint is a joint that I made when I burned all the flux out. Now watch what happens when I add some fresh flux and touch that existing solder without adding any you new solder. You can see how it nicely flows. If I do this, it flows nicely and beautifully and then works. Okay, showing us once again, so he must be going somewhere with this. Nice disgusting tip, and nobody likes a disgusting tip. Okay, not going to use the wire brush. Going to sand it. Not going to sand it. Not sure where this is going. Scotch bright it. Okay, so you must be doing something with the green Scotch bright. Scotch brights work excellent. The green is really, really a mild abrasive. I prefer the red. I'm not sure what he's doing right now. If you guys have seen this done before, let me know in the comments because I really don't know what he's doing. I was under the impression he was going to clean the tip with the scotch bright. I'm sure that's where this is going, but... I don't know what the cup is for. We're spraying it with water in the cup. I 
<laughs> that's not doing anything. So I hope he doesn't think that's clean. All right, he's trying it again. This guy, this, this is interesting. There's the cut. That's the editing cut right there to give him the effect he was looking for. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's really an effect. Um, watch out for those cuts, guys. You just saw that. He really doesn't think that's good, does he? Wow. Oh, it looks like he's doing more painting. I think what's more amazing is that he hasn't learned from his previous attempts without changing anything that he's not getting the effect he's looking for. I don't know exactly where he's going with this. Once again, this is just a complete waste of time. He must be doing some type of uh, adjustment here. Okay. Once again, no flux. And he's back to his painting process. And it's interesting, guys. You can plainly see there, you're not getting any penetration with that at all. absolutely amazing he has literally done the same thing like what three times now no no positive effect out of this at all so here we all right are. so we've got another video here and this content creator did what the previous one did they like to use clickbait type titles where once again they put words like professional and mastering soldering things of that nature and odds are when you see this type of text guys be very careful um, and again, don't take my word for it. Let's jump right in and see what we got here. So when you do it this way, you're going to get the most out of what you're doing. So here we have some heat shrink. We're going to actually cut ourselves a piece off of there. Make sure you cut as much as you can put on to the actual product. It's just better that way because occasionally... Really not sure why anyone would be using a utility knife to cut heat shrink that way when using scissors gives you a much better cut and it's much, much safer, guys. Beware of what you see in these videos bunch of different ways of doing this i'm going to show you the okay way i've got to say this because i've seen this done in so many content creator videos and of course they're not original enough to even recreate a video using their own technique they kind of just follow the same pattern i've discussed that before the thing you guys need to keep in mind when you're intertwining leads and trying to offer some type of mechanical extra strength through intertwining the uh, conductors that's BS. I don't know where that came from, but when you use the proper solder and flux combination and you solder them properly, those leads become one. And there is no difference in strength by you intertwining the leads. This is just online BS. And truth be told, solder connections are not designed for tensile strength. They're not. They are electrical connections. I don't know why they act as if they're doing like silver soldering where they're more or less brazing and trying to get a weld together. It just makes no sense to me. And I've seen this done. I know many of you have. And I'm going to prove this myth by actually showing you once again me doing soldering in a practical example and showing you exactly what you're left with and why this is not best practice. The actual solder to melt on the pen first and then it'll it'll actually draw in across and look at that it's just going straight into everywhere i'm going to make sure and get everything to the left and right done make sure i coat it now i can't see underneath until i'm actually done so the more i do here and the idea is if you see it drawn all right so we've got another master class at soldering and once again these pro tips are not correct First and foremost, many of you already realize the iron he's using is filthy. The barrel's filthy along with the tip of the iron. Then he's leaving the tip of the iron on the conductors for an extended period of time while he keep continuously fills those conductors with solder. 
He's thinking he's doing this correctly because he sees more and more Sutter getting dumped into the leads. What he doesn't realize, obviously, is that if he would have used flux like you're supposed to, he would have had proper wetting and cleaning action, and therefore the solder would have been sucked into the conductors at a much higher rate, meaning that you're not cooking the leads casing for an extended duration of time, in this video, almost 20 seconds. This, once again, defines being careful to who you listen to. And once again, when I show you the practical example of the video I'm going to show you, You'll get to see how fast this actually takes place, and you do not need to use an iron like a paintbrush essentially going back and forth. The whole idea of the iron is to melt the solder after it has proper flux added to the conductors so they're clean, and, and the flux will help that solder stay wet and fill up all the gaps in those conductors, yielding a solid connection. All right, guys, I want to give you an actual practical demonstration of how to solder, once again, Kester 186 RMA Flux. Uh, Kester number 44 solder. This is absolutely essential. This is no clean flux. And here is a DB9 connector circuit board. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm actually not going to apply flux to this, but I wanna show you my iron. And you can see how clean this is. This iron, quite literally, is well over nine years old, okay? Now, of course, I'm not saying you have to maintain it like I maintain mine just because of the fact that I make money with mine, but yours should look similar and can easily look similar if you maintain it, okay? Look at the tip. Now, I have an automatic tip cleaner here, and again, all of, this, all of these components are available in my store. Once again, I'm not going to apply flux, and I want to show you what happens. If you go to do what these, all these gurus on YouTube explain to do, if you do this and just keep adding solder to join two terminals, that's what you're left with. And you can see exactly what happens. The solder does not flow. You're not getting wetting. You're not getting flowing. What you're actually getting is a tail and you can see this right here you can see that tail now what when you apply flux what you're going to notice is you're going to allow the solder to flow and due to the fact that the Kester number 44 solder does have some flux within it which guys always say to me the thing to keep in mind it's not enough other than to allow the solder to really stick to the tip. Now watch what happens. Look at the difference. I mean, I just did this live for you so you could see. That's how easy that is. Now if you get too much solder, because I've had guys say that too, apply another drop of flux, and you see how little you're using. Touch it with your iron, and you can actually mold it. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Look at that. That came out absolutely beautiful. You can see here the bond all the way across. Now this is no clean flux. I still will clean the residual off. Now I use a citrus based cleaner for my flux. Uh, a lot of guys use 99% isopropyl. I'm not a big fan of it personally, uh, but again, to each his own. This stuff smells really good, or at least I like it. And uh, again, to wipe any residual off, you can see exactly the connection you're left with. That is gorgeous. That's exactly what most end users are looking for right there. And please excuse me, I am sick. <laughs> so trying to do this as uh, efficient as possible. The stay put soldering jig this has been in the market now for quite some time. I've had this released, um, but it's not a jig for all applications. I've had a lot of end users, myself included, needing another type of jig. Um, and when I say that for wires, for connectors, for circuit boards, um, so I came up with my new MagnaLock system. Now what makes this unique is that first and foremost, uh, if she's looking at the stay put here, this arm, you see these holes inside the steel plate, this arm can actually be mounted 
actually two of these, up to four, can be mounted in position here and you can adjust the length. I will do that in another video. But these have neomagnium magnets on it and this is for circuit boards and you can see how these are all machined. But what we usually see, and again here's another circuit board one, these can adjust in height. These two right here are really unique because I wanted something that you could adjust the tension on the holder. So you can see the um, engraved area where once again we have a pocket so that you can grab it. If you rotate this down, you can see we're compressing the spring. As we compress the spring, it allows us to add more tension to our part and these are both backed with silicone. So you do not get any more pinching from alligator clips, okay? We see a lot of guys online always joining wires. This seems to be something that a lot of end users want to do. So if I want to adjust tension, if I want to release some tension, I just back out. Now I can come in here and slide that in. And these can naturally slide together to give you perfection. Okay? Now, you see some guys, when they go to join two leads, and I'll never understand this, they try to make a mechanical connection. The thing to keep in mind is that when you're soldering, we're welding, essentially, is what we're doing, okay? Uh, to do a mechanical type connection where guys are twining the wires together, it's really not necessary, and I'm going to show you why. Here is what you can get away with, and it works absolutely amazing if it's done properly when you use flux. I'm just adding a drop. Once again, you'll notice my pattern, and the pattern is very simple. I come in. I use my brass solder ball to clean the tip. Now I have some flux on there already. I'm just going to come over here, let the iron heat up. I'm at 650C right now. And this is already pre-tinned silicone lead, and you can see exactly what we got there. That came out gorgeous. As a matter of fact, if I rotate it, you can really see it. Okay, we're going to do the other one too. Watch this. Done. And you see a lot of these guys, they'll sit there and they continuously are adding more and more solder. And you saw how fast this was. I'm just putting just enough solder on there. And these are pre-tinned leads. So once I apply the flux, now you can see there's not enough flux there. And how do you know that? Because you can see the tail. That means I burned off all the flux before that solder could penetrate. Now watch. Done. Now watch, you want to join these, real simple. Bring them up, do that. You notice no pinching? There's no pinching, no crimping, no casing damage. Everything there is in perfect alignment. This is the way jigging in my eyes should be done. This makes it all too easy. Add a, add a drop of flux, you want to join these two together. You notice I didn't skin back 800 feet of lead like most guys do, done. Now, I'm going to hit this one more time to make sure this is fully seated, but I assure you, it is. These are silicone leads. You see how much I'm using? Just a touch. Done. Now, all you do, pop out, pop out, and those are perfect. Okay? This is something that a lot of guys want to do all the time. They want to keep adding more and more solder and you saw how fast that is you can see the joint right there and that's completely bound <clears throat> i'm trying to break this and there is no way you're going to break that when you see content creators skin way back on their leads they come back to here the thing to keep in mind is the farther back you come when you join leads together you're going to lose flexibility of the casing so you really only want to stay within a small distance. And when I say a small distance, no more than about a quarter of an inch. Okay? This is just as strong as if they were to twine and do everything you see these guys doing. If you're not happy with how level something is when you use the MagnaLock, this is what I love. We can come in here like this. Come in here like this. And you can position finely everything. Because again, these are magnet. These are magnets, so all you would have to do, get your positioning where you want it, and everything stays right there. Add flux. There is absolutely no way you could screw this up as long as you follow the process.
we'll just bring this guy up done and those are flawless I actually just leveled it with my other finger because you actually have your hands available now so you can pull this one out pull this out and you can see boom done and that's exactly when you want to join leads what they should look like you don't see a big mess and if you wanted to add heat shrink naturally which of course you would um, and that would insulate but now you don't have a huge mess where you have guys that are sitting there going well wait a minute I've got this big of an area that I've tinned and now I can't flex so again keeping that in mind as far as this unit like I said you can adjust these heights to hold basically whatever kind of circuit board for instance that you want it to. If it's thicker, if you're working on cell phones, because I've had a lot of guys ask me about that, if I ever thought about doing things that you were working on cell phones or you're working on different types of connectors, this makes it all too easy. Pop that out. Got another one, another tight. This is the prototype. It has not been released yet, but you can definitely see these are spring lock too, and these have self-centering pins on them. So if you're dealing with a circuit board with holes in it, naturally you just insert the centering pin and you're good to go. These are probably going to be the most used, which are the right end cap. These are mainly for leads and anything flat. Like I said, these are really, really unique in that you can adjust how much tension you have holding whatever you're trying to hold together. But again, Looking at the difference and what you're able to achieve when you use flux, you didn't see me sitting here for 40 minutes. And no different than them. I'm just going to show you, if I don't use flux, what the result is. Get this guy out of the way. No flux. Let's see what we got. There you go. Exactly what they do. That's why they leave their iron there for 40 minutes because basically you cannot get the solder to flow. Watch. Live demonstration. No editing. Add a little flux. and just leave it and it'll penetrate and there you go totally different now one other point I want to make out let's say you're tinning a lead because this is something a lot of guys don't cover you can see my flux is on there it's about ready to drip off now I get questions all the time does it matter if I use paste or liquid flux it really doesn't matter it's up to you I prefer a liquid flux because it penetrates better you could see when that's properly tinned what that looks like now i want to show you something that no one talks about to make sure that you've properly tinned this if you get a little bulb and you can see there's a little bit of a, a or an increase in thickness on this side of the solder if you ever get that once again just add a little more flux clean your tip and in seconds wipe it you're perfect now what you want to do is double check to make sure that the lead is fully penetrated. You notice I keep my Nipix right here and I put my finger above the top where I'm cutting. And why did I do that? Watch this. Let's see if she gets it on camera. Watch. Did you see the end? That's the end of the lead. Now we can look inside there and you can see nothing but pure solder. That means you've penetrated the lead and everything is done correctly. Okay, this is why you don't see soldering done because to do it at this level, especially when you're building cables or doing assembly, it's very time consuming, especially when you're checking like I just showed you and you should be doing that with every lead to make sure you have full penetration. And once again, if you look carefully there, you can definitely see that solder went through all the way through every strand. That's what we're looking for. So again, Knowing what tools you need, and depending upon how serious you are to go down this rabbit hole of learning this craft, the easiest thing to think about as far as what tools you need immediately 
is going to be a good soldering iron. Now, when I say good, it doesn't mean expensive. Let me make sure I'm being very clear with that. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a good soldering iron. What you do have to do is invest in a soldering iron made with quality parts. If the barrel is not stainless, I think you're going to find that they just do not hold up. I love stainless because this can be cleaned numerous times and it comes out like brand new. As a matter of fact, you can see some carbon and oxidation forming on the tip. I'll just come in here. Touch that, do a, a re-cleaning in my auto cleaner, and you can see the tip is brand new. That's the way it should be. And that's why the results you get are going to be based upon your tools. So I can tell you right now, what's what's the cost of the um, UWAs in my store? I know one of them. 200. Well, that's that's for the, the full station. What's mm -hmm. the other one? I think that's well, like... The 908 is 65, maybe. 65 Something with like flux? Because I can tell you right now, <clears throat> flux right now maybe is maybe 75. Yeah, I think it's 75, but mm -hmm. it came with flux. And yeah. if I'm correct, flux right now is about 90 bucks a gallon. So I can tell you right now, with a soldering iron that comes with flux, because I know I'm the only one that includes that with my iron packages, you guys will be set as far as what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to solder correctly, it does not get any better than that. Once again, look at the iron. This is what yours should look like. We're very close to that. You will get heat oxidation. That's fine. You don't want carbon where it's black and built up. If you have carbon and it's black and built up, the unit needs to be cleaned. Okay. Now, let's cover another area that I get asked all the time. What temperatures do I use? If I want a tin, I'll go with a 650C temperating because then the solder is a little thicker and it builds up a, uh, a little bit to give me more of a ferrule when you're doing leads you can see right there it's a thicker application right there and then if I want to do more penetration if I'm doing thicker uh, heavier leads heavier gauge leads like so uh, soldering a spindle cable watch this I'll just hit channel one which is my memory my EWA and that's 650, and then I'll go to channel 3, and it's 752. Okay, and that I do because of the heavier gauge leads when I'm working with spindle cables. Okay, but to switch back and forth, and this is why having a, a I feel, a good soldering station is you just hit the button. And within seconds, you're back, back to whatever temperature you need. Okay, now for my guys out there doing um, surface base soldering, Again, you do have that with these stations if you want to do that. That's not something I primarily do. I primarily do just general assembly. Um, so again, that's something that, and when I say general assembly, more cable assembly, um, wiring of, of controllers, things of that nature. Uh, the principles are all the same though. You just saw whether you're soldering a circuit board or uh, components on a circuit board, or if you're soldering leads, whatever it may be, that's the principle and the way you should execute it. Again, having the tools makes it easier. But showing it in action and getting to see how it's done and then looking at the finish, tremendous difference. And guys, just so you know, this is a two ounce bottle. For most of you, this is gonna last probably till the date of expiration because you're not gonna go through that. I go through these very quickly because I do a lot of soldering. But if you don't, most likely it's gonna last you <laughs> like I said, till the date of expiration on the bottle. So again, I hope that this practical demonstration is uh, brought light to way these things should be done and just how easy soldering can be. And again, it is a skill that still needs to be practiced if you're doing um, different connectors. There are tons of different connectors to do. But when you see these guys holding their iron and they're just holding it and holding it and holding it, that's not done correctly. You need an iron that's clean. You need to use flux. And the only reason they would ever, once again, be holding the iron repetitively on either a lead or a circuit board is because they do not use flux. They don't understand it. Or they're too broke to be doing the job right. You know, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You got to be honest with yourself. If you don't have the money to do the job right, don't do it.
because this kind of stuff will bite you. And don't believe for a minute, because I've seen this in other videos where guys will say, you don't need to use flux if you're doing just circuit board soldering or you're doing, um, there's enough for terminal connections on something like this. No, because you still have a compromised connection. Flux is to be used on every connection. Every connection. So, again, I hope that this has been helpful. Keep the questions coming. If there's a specific connector you want me to cover, I can do that. You've seen my work with the spindle connectors. Um, Magna Lock really isn't designed for that. It's more designed for my guys out there who are doing um, circuit board work, cell phone work, uh, direct wiring leads. I have a lot of guys in radio control and drones that want to do more precision type work. And again, this comes in super handy, especially when you add a stay put arm to it. You've got an amazing jig platform.